Oh my lord, 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 lord. Oh my lord, 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 lord. Oh my lord, 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 lord. Man, see, I was gonna take it high, you were gonna take it low. Right there. I thought we had something going So how do I find myself singing this song in the van with a group of guys driving somewhere? Well, let me take you back. I was competing at the Nautique Moomba Masters all the way down in Melbourne, Australia, entering into my first pass, and the boat went so close to this wall that was supporting a bridge overhead that the wake right next to me smashed up against the wall, and I saw something I've never seen in all my years of ride behind boats. It was this quarter pipe, this wave right against the wall. And I looked at it, I looked at everybody in the boat, the judges, drivers, all those people, and I was like, did you see that? Did you see what just happened? I wanna hit that. So fast forward a few months to the Hyperlight catalog shoot, and Rodrigo Donoso, who's the Hyperlight team photographer, was along with us. I told him about this wall ride that I wanted to do, and we came across a bridge on this river, and we took a few shots uh, and making it happen. I started to hit it, and it started to tear up my board and I only had a couple of these things that we were shooting all the catalog stuff. So Rodrigo and I kind of stepped aside and we said, okay, we gotta find this somewhere else. Just keep your eye open for it. Later that summer, I met Janet Scott uh, and Chuck from Wake Gunnersville. Uh, it's a pool and patio store uh, on this lake in Alabama. They had me come up there to do some coaching and some demos up there. And so. We were on our way out to go do some riding and there's all these barges that we drove our boats through. Talking to uh, this guy Warren who was up there, I said, how close can you drive to this? And he goes, you can go touch it if you want. I was like, okay. And it's this huge metal wall. So he starts driving close to it. The wave forms up, is smashing up against this thing. And I said, how often are these barges here? He says, well, they come and go, but they're here all the time. My next sentence was, I'm coming up here with a photographer and I want to get a cool shot. And I think it might be good enough for a cover. It took us nearly two years to get something in the books. Leading up to it, I talked to Sean Perry, who then was the editor at Wakeboard Mag, and I said, I've got this idea. I think it's worthy of a cover if it works out, but I'd not only like to get this shot, I want to do a video of the making of the shot because I think there's some story to tell there. He loved the idea, got behind it. I talked to my sponsors so that everybody could kind of kick in to help make the trip happen. We all started to get pretty excited. We had Jake Snyder uh, come along. I had Jake Pilot, who's a pro cable and boat rider, uh, lives down the lake from me, and I wanted him to come along to be my driver. So we had two Sean's, two Jake's, and a Rodrigo. And that was the trip of when we found ourselves driving north. 600 miles later, we pull into Wake Gunnersville. We unload out of the van, everybody's amping, the people in Gunnersville are pumped, we're pumped. We wanna head out to the lake to go and see how this is gonna work. So we go out in their personal G's to go test this thing, tell Jake to drive this path really close. The first time we drove by the wall, the wave didn't form. My heart slightly sank. Okay, what do we gotta do different? Maybe we were closer. We literally drove by the wall 25 times and I was not seeing the same wave. I was starting to panic. We just drove 600 miles, everybody is watching, people are waiting for this thing to happen and it's not in front of my face like I've seen so many times. I saw it in Australia, I saw it in Texas, I even saw it here, but why am I not seeing it now? I eventually just get so frustrated, I just jump out on the water myself on my board because maybe I'm not seeing it the same as if I'm standing there. And when I get out there and I see it is not hittable, it is not working. I go to bed that night and honestly, it was a really rough night for me. I pretty much was going to bed with tears welling up in my eyes. We decided we're on it first thing in the morning. We get out there and we have different boats. Maybe it's the boat, what, what's going on? We don't know. Like we tried to go back and forth for over an hour with different boats at different speeds and we eventually said, okay, we've come all this way. Let's at least go ride. Let's just leave the scene. Let's go shake this off. And as we start to go out to ride, we pass a bridge. Here we are at another bridge and 
it's working better on this bridge, but it's a really short support pillar. So that's when it dawns on me. The bridge had a wall going all the way down into the water. The barges were either completely empty, so they were floating really high and there was nothing for the wake to support again, so it would go underneath, or they were so full that the barge was so low in the water there was nothing to hit because the wake would go on top of the deck. So that meant we needed a half full barge. We looked around, we saw nothing. We went out to ride, we just wanted to get some footage. As we came in from our late morning ride, we were heading back to the dock. We saw a barge that was full on one end, half on the other, so it was at this big incline. It was our half full barge. Not what I envisioned, but it's what we needed. So as we start to set up, I'm sitting in the water, the rope's about to go tight, and I had this thought come over my head. I'm always telling people, be careful of wanting to get sponsored. You know, take your time, ride for fun. Because people's expectations then become your reason for riding. That's when I realized like, you have to be willing to fail at something because otherwise you're gonna miss a lot of opportunities in life. Sure, we drove up there, a lot of people are expecting it, but I tried, like I really tried. And so I, I kind of shed this off and went, all right, let's go for a fun feeling. If it's there, awesome. If not, still a fun trip. Hey, fun. After a few passes, getting the speed, the rope length, the distance dialed in, I saw the waveform up in front of me and I cut at it. I didn't get very high up on it, but the feeling was there. I rode this water quarter pipe that I've never felt before on my wakeboard against this metal wall and my fins kind of scraped and I came down and it was this feeling of like absolute joy. Just, that was awesome and people were cheering, everybody was fist pumping, like it was happening. So the sun's going down, the flashes are popping, we feel like we're in this time crunch. There's like 10 boats out in the water floating watching this. A bunch of locals are there, everybody's excited. After feeling like we have a shot in the can that's gonna work, I thank everybody and then Rodrigo and I talk and we look at where the sun just went down and where it's gonna be coming up in the morning and we determine we're coming out here at sunrise. So as the sun comes up over the hills, it's gonna light up the side of the barge right where I'm hitting it. So we idle out onto the lake in the dark, get set up, ready for the shot, it's go time. Jake hits the throttle, drives it perfectly, line up the wall, take one of the hardest cuts that I've taken into this thing, and I get to the top. As we circle back, Rodrigo's fist pumping, I whip into the boat, he shows me the shot, we got it. This is the shot we wanted. He's like, we're done. I said, yeah, but that was really fun. I've driven a long way. I want to do that again. That was like a really fun feeling. I'm going to go again if y'all are cool with it. He says, of course, go for it. I take another hit at this thing and get even higher onto the top and I hear my tail just <sighs> scrape across the top. I whip into the boat. Rodrigo shows me the shot, puts his camera down, gives me a big Rodrigo bear hug, tackles me into the water and it's a really emotional moment for both of us. Just high-fiving, everybody in the crew is just amping right now. <laughs> it's it like worked. above the pig. Unless the side, like the sun with the fill. Yeah, it helps so much. Oh my gosh, it just makes it to where it's dynamic, not flat. Yes! So we got the shot, but that wasn't the end of the adventure. The stipulation of coming on this trip is you had to at least go wakeboard one time. So, Sean Perry had his opportunity. He decided to grab uh, somebody's directional board. It looked super fun when he was riding. Rodrigo took his turn and his energy carried right out into the water. Always great seeing him smile. Jake Pilat went out for another shred. And Jake Schneider, the videographer, was the last guy to go and ride. It impressed me with his tricks and really enjoyed his style and he took it all the way back to the dock. We said our goodbyes, our thanks. Uh, everybody at Wake Gunnersville was awesome. Big thanks to everybody there, and uh, they were super helpful, and without you guys, wouldn't have happened, so thank you very much. The other one. Rod, did you? I haven't seen it. Mother <laughs>
I just hit? Why didn't you see it on the screen? It's a person. I don't know, but you are deep into some flowers. <laughs> Those are but gorgeous just flowers. You just, you just went over the curb and went into the flowers. <laughs> I think. Did I knock something over? No. You got that, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Brody, you gonna look for me? Oh my gosh. I'm... Oh, you're good. <laughs> you're good. No, just make sure I didn't knock over like a brick wall. Or no, you're good. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, that place is closed. <laughs>